Members, the House is resumed. Before the dinner break, uh, we were transacting the address and deploy, a reply debate. We call for the next speaker, uh, Labour Party call, the Honourable Member Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened, sir. I was, I was rudely interrupted about three years ago. I come back and there's a little bit of dust on the... Uh, a little bit of dust on the paper. I look across the other side of the House, Mr Speaker, the same faces. They look about five years older, but, but not much has changed. But first and foremost, I must congratulate you, Mr Speaker. I, this is the first time that you're in the chair. Congratulations. Wonderful. Well done. I congratulate all the new members, the returning members. It's great to be sitting beside Carmel Cepoloni, and it was fantastic to have Calvin Davis here as well. We know what it's like. We know what it's like to lose your seat, well not lose your seat, to miss out in 2011 and then work incredibly hard to get back here. And the reason we work so hard, Mr Speaker, is because we know there is work be to be done. We know that the Labour Party is the only party that can drive the sort of change that New Zealand needs, Mr Speaker. It is good to be back, there's no doubt about that. And I must admit, I am very, very proud to stand here as the elected representative from the wonderful electorate of Napier. And my promise to the people of Napier is I will work incredibly hard to repay the faith of those who voted for me, and I'll work even harder to earn the respect of those who did not. But if you'll just allow me two seconds, what I must do, Mr Speaker, is just thank a team that really went hard for two and a half years. Rob Johnson, my campaign manager, Pete Finlay, Sue Simon, Pauline Elliott, Keith, Raywin, Mike, and many, many others who worked incredibly hard because they believed that change was necessary. And we did it. Pauline Bennett as well, I must also thank Mr Speaker. You may ask, why would I thank Paula Bennett? I'll tell you what Paula Bennett did. She came down to Napier and she called the Deputy Mayor naive. She called her petty and she called her immature. And I reckon that was about a thousand votes. <laughs> I remember seeing Mr Tremaine in the meeting and Wayne Walford. They heard Paula Bennett call the Deputy Mayor, who stood up and said, I'm actually a national voter. Paula Bennett said, you're immature, you're naive. The people in Napier don't know what they're talking about. Fantastic. We want Paula Bennett back more in the Napier Electric, Mr, uh, Mr. Speaker. But as mentioned, we ran a, uh, a two-and-a-half-year campaign, 125 street corner meetings, over 10,000 telephone calls, hundreds of doors, and one red fire engine. That was everywhere. But I'll tell you what we did. More importantly, we came up for a plan for a strategy to win back the provinces. And so what I would like to do is put every National Party MP who holds a provincial seat on notice. I'll tell you what, there are going to be a whole lot of very, very hungry, very hungry Labour Party candidates that are going to be running the same sort of campaign that I ran. They're going to be raising the money. They're going to be out there for two and a half years and they're going to be concentrating on the issues that are important to their electorate and the people who determine elections. But one thing, Mr Speaker, one thing that, one thing that really, really shone through for me is that all the street corner meetings, the thousands of Napier people I met, what they were really concerned about was the lack of opportunity, the lack of jobs. They wanted to know where was the strategy for the regions. And in fact, Lauren Shaw, the Mayor of Hastings, who was also Chair of Local Government New Zealand, actually is on record as saying, this government has no plan for the regions. You've left us behind. You can't have an economy that is based on Auckland house prices and a Christchurch rebuild because it doesn't take New Zealanders along with it. And Mr Speaker, you know how hard the Labour candidate worked in, uh, in Whanganui and I expect to see the Deputy Mayor Hamish in this house in 2017. He is an incredibly good man. Now, another thing that this government did, Mr Speaker, is they stripped away local democracy and that was an absolute disgrace. They took away the ability for communities to determine their own future when they change their local government amendment bill. And Mr Speaker, I am going to put a private member's bill in, in the ballot, and I challenge any one of those provincial MPs, Mr Speaker, to vote against it if it is drawn out, because they know that, in fact, if amalgamation proposals were put to their regions, then their people would want to say, their constituents would want to say, 
in the future of their local community. So we need to take that back. We need to take back of that, there's no doubt. But the most important thing we need to do, Mr Speaker, is we need to change the nature of this economy. We need to move away from a commodity economy where all we do is send products offshore without a cent of value being added. And let me give you just one example, and that's the forestry industry. Last year, Mr Speaker, there were 28 million tonnes of logs harvested, and 16 million tonnes of those logs were sent offshore without one cent of value being added. 70% of those went to China, and that is an absolute disgrace. Not one cent of value being added. And in fact, I'll tell you what's happened in the local industry, and if that member spoke to his sister, he would know what is going on in the regions. Over 40 sawmills have closed. 40 sawmills have closed. Over 4,000 men and women have lost their jobs in the regions because that government has no strategy. In fact, this is an industry, Mr Speaker, that is worth $5 billion, and the New Zealand Forest Owners Association has actually come out and said in the media about a week ago, what is wrong with the government? They have no strategy for the forest industry. And they said how disappointed they were that not even a cabinet minister, this is, this is the industry, Mr Speaker, where it has the third largest export earning, and they didn't even give it to a minister inside cabinet. They didn't even give it to a minister who knows even how to spell strategy, let alone write one. That is how the government is treating the regions, and that is how the government is treating good, hard-working Kiwis in the provinces, who all they want to do, Mr Speaker, is work hard, go back to their families and live a life. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister said that crime had fallen. In Hawke's Bay, crime has risen. In the provinces, Mr Speaker, it is a different story than the speech the Prime Minister gave. In the provinces, Mr Speaker, they are being hollowed out. There are jobs going. People are leaving. This is not a rock star economy. There are real change that needs happening, Mr Speaker, and this government is not doing it. There are massive issues. More voters are becoming disenfranchised with the system, with the whole parliamentary system, and they're not voting. 20% of Kiwis couldn't even be bothered voting this time because they didn't see a future and they didn't feel engaged. Mr Speaker, the other thing I'd like to make a comment on is Amy Adams stood up and she made all these random statements about the Labor Party. I'll tell you what I see in our caucus, Mr Speaker. I see a whole lot of really good MPs who are now very, very hungry, who want to go out there. I see opportunities. I see a couple of... One, one new guy here, Mr Speaker, who's going to make a real difference. We now hold six of the seven Maori seats, and I'll tell you what, these guys in three years' time are going to be sitting on this side of the House because we have, we have the caucus that is going to make a difference. We have the caucus that's going to go out there and create a real mood for change, Mr Speaker. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to go out there and we're going to engage with the people of New Zealand like we know how and like that government has forgotten how to do. Like that government has forgotten how to do, Mr Speaker. I only see opportunities. I really do. I only see opportunities in the Labor caucus at the moment. I see a lazy, I see an arrogant government on that side, Mr Speaker, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, Mr Speaker. You are from a provincial electorate. The people of Whanganui, the people of Whanganui are really worried about the opportunities for their children. Well, Labor has solutions. Labor will have the policies and Labor will create that mood for change where in three years' time they will determine who and how a government will drive the future of this country. And Mr Speaker, there will be a vision. There will be a vision for this country. And I know that we're going to get out there and we're going to show Kiwis that we have the policies to take us there. We have the people to lead New Zealand. And, I, and I'll tell you what, Mr Speaker, the future is not fracking. The future is not fracking. Imagine, imagine an industry which destroys the global competitive advantage that New Zealand has. The clean green image we had. The irony, we have the Minister of Tourism as the, police, as the Prime Minister, and then his new minister is the Minister of Fracking. I would love to see some of the arguments that are going to go on in the Prime Minister's office when Minister Simon Bridges comes along and says, 
and says fracking is the way forward. It is not, Mr Speaker. It is not. It is not the way forward. And they say this in Hawke's Bay. And they say this in Hawke's Bay, fracking. Oil and gas is the future. Well, that is a future that I can tell you, Mr Speaker, that the vast majority of Kiwis are going to reject. And like Icarus, like Icarus, who flew too close to the sun, I suspect Mr Bridges is in for a big fall. But I must, I must say, Mr Speaker, it is good to be back. I can't wait to get my teeth stuck into it, and I can't wait to really get working hard and show the people of New Zealand Labour is back, Stuart Nash is back, and I... And, <laughs> Carmel Cepaloni is back, Kelvin Davis is back, and we're here to take it to the National Party and present an alternative vision. Thank you very much. Honourable Jonathan Coleman. Mr Speaker, I want to uh, begin by...